Hey, I'm Joel Lynch from Tech Radar, and I have been living with the new NVIDIA Shield 2017 version. So it promises 4K HDR video, game streaming from your PC to the NVIDIA Shield or from the cloud to the NVIDIA Shield, as well as some Android TV features. So what's it like to live with? Here's my seven days with the NVIDIA Shield TV. Welcome to my home. We're going to be looking at for the next seven days, the new NVIDIA Shield. 40% smaller than last year's model. You've got two USB ports, one and two. HDMI port, which is going to be carrying our 4K HDR streams and gaming sessions to our tellies. There's Ethernet port. We've also got a remote control, which comes packed in with the console this time. Got a little uh, microphone button there the new Shield controller. Um, the D-pad as well has moved from being like a disc pad to a more traditional like cross pad, but there are also a set of far field microphones in here to control the Shield itself entirely almost, if you wanted to. NVIDIA does not pack a HDMI cable in the box, nor does it pack a 4K capable HDMI cable in the box. I think that's it, I think we're in. You get a kind of row of recently used uh, apps or recommendations along the top based on things you like. I don't like either the Fresh Prince or Ed Sheeran, so uh, Google, you need to sort your algorithm out. Don't even like James Corden or Jimmy Fallon. I'll let you make your own mind up on Donald Trump. So Google Play Store, Google Play Movies and TV, YouTube, needs no explanation. Netflix, Amazon Video, which is new to the Shield, Google Play Games, also down here you've got the NVIDIA Games Hub, here's the library of stuff that we can access. Remember here is this is a collection of, of all games across all services, but for now we're going to try to use voice control to download a game that I've already purchased. So I'm going to hit the microphone button just to activate it. Star Wars. Knights of the Old Republic. No results. Interesting. Open Google Play. Doesn't like that. Maybe we need to get out of here and go to the main bit. Okay, let's try again. Open Google Play. Okay, that worked. Maybe it was because we were in the Shield Hub. That's a little bit annoying though. I'd like to think you could jump from one to the other without having to first close the other one. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It liked it, and it knows it's already purchased. It's a Sunday, it's winter, it's miserable outside. We're going to watch a film. And watching films on the NVIDIA Shield is really bloody good. So the Shield has HDR support through a lot of its video apps including big streaming services like Netflix and Amazon. So I've got a pretty good internet connection as well. You're going to want a fast uh, broadband connection to get HDR content working. So you want to have it on 4K resolution and you want it on 60 hertz or 59.94 hertz. And make sure you've got the color space set to one of the 4K 10 bit. Make sure you've got a relatively new HDMI cable, they have got it hooked up to the port which supports HDR streaming. The PS4 can't do currently, it's worth remembering. Little dinky shield, about the size of my hand, is in 4K HDR streaming. PS4 Pro runs 4K and not very much HDR stuff at the moment, at least not in terms of video content. It's probably really hard to tell on your uh, on a YouTube stream. Um, but this looks really nice. Great definition between the dark, darkness of the scene and the light sources, like you've got the stained glass window up there. That's really, really popping. It's pretty impressive, it's not bad. It's another miserable day out. So I'm gonna play some games rather than face the outside world. You can play native Android games. You can get some retro emulators on there. You can stream games from your PC, if you've got a video card, to the Shield, or you can stream games from the cloud, and that's what we're going to do today. 
if you don't have a PC, it's a, it's a really good alternative. You can buy games individually at full price, or as part of the subscription service, you get like a load that you can play as part of the subscription service. So let's see what's included in the subscription service. It's quite a lot of stuff, and it's quite a lot of pretty good stuff. So if you've never played the Batman games, you've got all of them except Arkham Knight, the newest one, uh, Borderlands, yeah, you know, some, some decent stuff. Um, it's very much dependent on how good your internet connection is. Now I have about a, a 70 meg connection here, which is, you know, it's pretty good really. Um, but you should be able to get by on about 15 service scales dependent on how good your internet connection is. It favours frame rate to resolution. So let's have a look at something that is pretty graphically intense. Where is Sleeping Dogs? Now already, this looks pretty good. I'm not a rated game. Mind is language. Now you can see a little bit of Jada kicking in there where my internet connection can't keep up. But now I'm in. All right. So let's see how it plays. I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Now, if you don't have a gaming PC, this is like really visually smart. A little less comfortable to play than if you were playing natively. There's a little bit of lag between inputs. Watch my controller and uh, push up. Push up. It is pretty much imperceptible, really. But it might be enough to slow a game where like reflexes are absolutely paramount. So let's have a look at Street Fighter and see how Street Fighter holds up. Okay, so it looks to me a little juddery right now. So let's see how this how this goes. There is a bit of lag here, yeah. Now if you're playing with like your pal, like locally on the on the sofa, and you're both having to deal with the same kind of lag stuff, I think you could probably be a little bit more uh, forgiving of it. But I am um, definitely noticing when he's jumping that there's like a delay. It's not a massive delay, but it just feels a, a little a little step behind what I'd want from like a fighting game. So the Nvidia Shield only comes with 16 gigabytes of storage space. Now I've installed a two gigabyte game already, and I'm down to 11 gigabytes of storage space left. So that means you've really only got 13 gigabytes of, sto of usable storage space out of the box. What you can do is plug in a USB storage drive. So this is a 128 gigabyte USB free from SanDisk. I'm pop this into the spare USB port on the back of the shield. Right, okay. So it's asking me, now that it's connected, whether I want to browse the drive or set up as a storage device. The Shield is a very quiet device. It doesn't make any noise even really. When I'm right next to it, my PlayStation, which is in like a low power mode, is making more noise than the Shield, which is actually on. We've jumped from 16 gigabyte, but really close to 13 gigabyte of usable space up to an additional 114 gigabytes. So let's move some of the apps across. Um, not bad going. So today we'll be looking at perhaps my favorite feature of the Nvidia Shield TV, and that is game stream. You need a very fast internet connection and you need a PC that's making use of one of Nvidia's graphics card specifically one that's newer than the 600, GTX 600 series. So long as you've got your uh, NVIDIA gaming PC set up somewhere, connected to the same network as your NVIDIA Shield TV, and you have the GeForce Experience app downloaded onto that PC, you can stream the games from the PC straight to the shield. You've got a library of all of the games that are installed. Some things you might have to add yourself. Westerado Double Barreled is an indie game which Nvidia didn't recognize, but it's happy to stream it once you've pointed the GeForce Experience app to the game. Who wants to see me die on the first level of Dark Souls 3? Yeah, everyone does, of course. So let's have a go. 
See now that it's gone to my PC desktop. We're in. So this is running at 4K, which is pretty mad. Looking around. Um, looking very nice. Sorted. One down, about a million to go. Can't remember the controls properly. But you can get a feel for like, this is a demanding game. And the shield is happy to stream it in. Now I'll try to get up close. Don't know if this will make much difference on the camera. It looks good. You know, this is a 4K TV. It's streaming in. You know, if you're a gamer, that the dark... Oh, he's got me. Shit, bastard. Sorry, mind my language. Um, you know, if you're a gamer, that the Dark Souls games require like pretty pinpoint accuracy. I've, I've got no problem making this the primary way that I would play this game. You can plug a wireless uh, mouse into the back, uh, like a wireless mouse and keyboard receiver into the back of the Nvidia Shield as well. So if you want to play something like Civilization um, or, or a uh, ARPG like Diablo, you want to play it click heavy, keyboard heavy game, you could do that as well. It's a really versatile system. The more I use it, the more I'm discovering about the, the different ways I can take advantage of its features. Video Shield 2017 edition into the office today. And one of the good things about it is it's so small and portable, you could bring it around to your mate's house in a jacket pocket. Right. Yeah. In, oh, in, in reality, this would have cost like, to get this far would have cost about 20 right. You ready? Alright. You see this? Do you recognise this? The Witness, an indie puzzle game that you would find on the PC and the PlayStation 4. Except, as you've probably guessed by now, considering the video you're watching, this isn't The Witness on PS4 or PC. This is the witness running on the Nvidia Shield. It's made by Jonathan Blow, the creator of Braid. He's the, the, the lead developer on it. But this port is made by Nvidia's own Lightspeed Studios to make a pretty, pretty darn good port. Um, now, it's, it's although it's obviously running on Android because we've got the Shield here. It's actually an NVIDIA Shield exclusive. It's made specifically to take advantage of uh, NVIDIA's, NVIDIA's tech. You can see my shadow being all creepy. Look at my shadow. Look at my shadow, creepy shadow. So what it shows you is that it's, it's, or it's it, this is running in 1080p. It's not running in 4K like uh, the Shield is like renowned for, but it's running natively on the Shield. This isn't streaming in. This is essentially a PS4 slash PC title, a, a relatively new one, um, running at, at a really, you know, stable, nice frame rate at full HD on the shield natively. You know, this isn't this isn't bad at all. I mean, if you if you didn't have a PS4 or a PC and you were looking for a way to play The Witness, this is pretty pretty good get behind this I can play this if you told me I had to play this not on the PS4 I had to play it here I, I, I think I could handle that although it is a bit creepy so that was my week with the Nvidia Shield TV now it's a really lovely device there's so many things you can do with it from the retro gaming stuff to the game streaming stuff to 4k HDR video all of that in one little package at its price is a really nice option However, there are some concessions you need to make. Do you have a fast internet connection? If you don't, you may not get the most out of this. Now, I brought this around to my brother's house. He's got a pretty average internet connection speed, and the game streaming stuff stuttered a lot more than when I was using it on my speedy home connection. As well as that, if you already have a PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, you really only got to consider this as a secondary console. You're not going to get the same AAA gaming experiences that you get on a home console. However, as an auxiliary unit for retro gaming emulators, 
streaming your PC games into your living room, this is a really nice option. Chromecast, it's built in here. You don't need to buy a Chromecast if you've got this. Lots of cool stuff like that. 4K HDR game streaming stuff all in one little box. But what do you think? We've been living with it for a week, but what other products would you like to see us living with for a week? Maybe it's a phone, maybe it's a tablet, maybe it's a TV. Let us know and we will try to bend to your whims. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for our next week with, and we will see you soon if you hit that subscribe button that lives down there. Near my hands. Bye.